Hello, welcome to another Toy Box audio video demonstration video. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into one of the more esoteric and kind of multi purpose modules, the ramp generator. Um, so let's have a look over here, it's up there on the screen, not in this camera. So, what do we have? We have a few patches here I've set up to demonstrate the few different ways of using the ramp generator. First of all, as a basic modulation source, this is just now a amplitude envelope. Ultimately, um, the two ports into the ramp generator behave in two different ways. The reset port behaves uh, when you when it receives a gate signal, it just starts the ramp generate the, the ramp cycle. So the rise will start, and then when the rise finishes, the the uh, full phase will commence and end. Um, with the trig import um, in use, we can uh, implement a kind of sustain period between the two phases, um, which turns it basically into an a an attack hold style um, release slash decay envelope. There was a load of nonsense words there, weren't there? Um, but you know it makes sense. Uh, we can turn this also with this generator into a. A, a kind of sustained device with a fade at the beginning and the end. So we can fade in and we can fade out. Different values, obviously. Um, now, some of these are slightly, e some of these um, knobs are slightly easier to see in certain situations, um, others are easier to hear. So let's just have a look, see if we can see what's going on with this shape. Now, if you look at the edges of that sausage of sound um the the crimping at the end of the sausage is very linear it's very straight and we can change that with this shape knob we can change it more make it more fluffy and squashy at the end look at that it's getting flatter and kind of rounded off at the end and it sort of almost sounds like as if the rise phase the actual rise has disappeared altogether and i'm just touching the key very lightly um for a very short amount of time, almost like a staccato hit. So there's barely any gate, but the sound is being sustained for the time that the rise exists for. So minimum, like a quarter of a second. And also the, uh, added together with the um, full phase. Uh, so together, they make 200, 300, what, we just got over half a second there. That's probably alive for about half a second. If we turn that shape back again, same thing, just more kite shaped. And uh, the other side of this knob squeezes the ramp in another way, kind of the opposite way, inwards, if you will, convex, concave. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how you change the shapes of the actual ramps themselves. Uh, we've got this sign function as well, which adds uh, a kind of sign bit of maths into the whole algorithm and that can change the way certain other things behave. It's not really that audible. Well, I mean, it is, but it's easier to demonstrate in other modes. Let's just quickly um, look at this switch here, which is um, a kind of adds a way of um, changing the behavior of the cycle, of the way that the ramp generator cycles or sort of does its thing. So normally, it just does this, comes in, and then it goes out. What happens if we have to set on double? Oh, so there's two. So it looks like there's one triangle, one wave at the beginning, one wave at the end. The first is described by the length of the rise phase, and the second is described by the length of the full phase. So we can make that really massive. I mean, I needn't describe that any further. Uh, the same goes with the, with the other settings in here. So we can have two cycles of that, of uh, an inverted kind of mirrored rise phase, and then the same at the end to to kind of full phases, and I think this is eight times. So before at the beginning, before at the end. So 
there you go. That's a strange uh, set of um, features for a ramp generator, is it not? And we also have this a couple of saturation settings as well that just kind of squeeze the shape towards the end and make it uh, make it flatter, make it kind of saturated. Just saturate the shape a little, bend it towards the edges. There you go. Look. So if we put the if we set that back to something a bit more reasonable, we can see that from normal linear, and we put it back to the satura saturation one. It's kind of rounded at the end, and the where the uh, where the shape, where the ramp, where the rise stage ends, it's it curves into the uh, sustain rather than suddenly um, switching like well like a like a switch like you see up here there's a, there's a very clear kind of end of the fat end of the square sausage into the triangle uh, but with it, both of these saturation modes the kind of ramp shape is slightly modified and bent a little there you go so that's one use of it as a modulation source and now here's the other way of using it as a modulation source and kind of turning it into an envelope we've got this reset function here remember i said we have the gate plugged into the reset function here so let me just make that normal again so we aren't distracted by other noises. And what have we here? We have the out of this ramp generator, again, the unipolar out going between 0 and 1, into the modulation source here, modulation source A. And we'll be able to hear it doing it something like this. So that's what similar, you know, that's, that's what an envelope sounds like. Um, we can turn it into an LFO by clicking this switch here. And obviously changing the speed of the LFO by changing the length of the rise and fall phases so super short LFO and then and obviously those kinds of that kind of shape that kind of pulsing the shape we have now can be adjusted by mucking around with the changing the intensity of the shape. And that's the signs adding a little bit of movement into it as well. It's not a sign cycle. It's not an additional sign um, oscillator added into the generator. It's um, a sign um, kind of bit of maths that's being used to recalculate the shape of the ramp waves, basically. So it's kind of squeezing and shaping the ends. Again, this can be easier to hear when we have um, in in another in another mode. Uh, one other thing I wanted to highlight here is this. Again, this mode here. So we have a. Let's get a sense of that as a as a time, and we use this little feature here, this little grayed out knob here, to change. So what this does is it. Um, so. Added together, the rise value and the fall value in this current situation make, what's that? That's barely a millisecond, is it? So it's like 237 milliseconds. What this knob do, uh, what this knob does is it um, maintains the relationship in time, but changes the distance for each of these values. So when we put, when we adjust this uh, knob to the maximum up here, say, the length of the cycle is the same, but the times have been reallocated across the uh, knobs. So let's try and make it a bit more obvious. Let's, so that's like a wow, 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 wow thing. Each cycle is about 200 milliseconds. Okay. That's with no change. So we can ease more time into the full phase by the sounds of it because that's going down, down, down. And then we can shape more time into the rise phase on this side, but it's the same length of cycle. Again, this is handy when we use it as an oscillator, which we'll look at very shortly. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's how you use it as a basic modulation source. Um, okay, all good. Let's move on to the next way of using it, which is as an oscillator. Um, let me just disable this and then flick to this. Okay. Now, what have we got here? Ah, so let's have a look at the waveform here. So what have we got plugged in? We've got the pitch plugged in here. And the gate to the reset switch, which if you remember me saying earlier, what this does, it um, the two one of the two modes, this mode, when you plug it into the reset port, um, just continuously switches between the rise and fall phases. And we can see that in the output from the wave, observ wave observer. We have zero rise time and a full time of like or something. Let's muck around with that, see what happens. I'm... Oh, there you go. Ah, you see? So, this is really cool. I love all this stuff, this is great. Is it a triangle? Is it a saw? Who knows? It changes. It changes. It's delightful. I love that. Okay. Um, so again, what we're looking at here, let's just touch on... Well, first of all, what I would normally do... What I'd normally do? There's no normal in anything, is there? Uh, what I would sometimes do if I wanted to is I would tune this oscillator to another oscillator to make sure that it's kind of playable, basically. So... So I've added another, just got a basic saw here from the nano synth patch. And I can hear that, I mean, this, so this note is a bit higher than... Uh, so I'm going to tune it down by making the cycle slightly longer. Do I do it with the full or the rise phase? Let's just do it with the full phase. And I can use the shift button to fine tune that. And now that's, now that's tracking like a good oscillator does. Uh, so let's look at this little switch here I mentioned earlier, which changes the uh, relationship between these two. So you should be able to see that in the Wave Observer scope. Wave cycles changing, uh, being maintained, as you can hear, because the frequency isn't changing. But the distribution of of times across the rise and fall stages is is being maintained. So we get a steady note and yet a and a changing timbre. Isn't that lovely. Uh, so what can we do with the shape cycles here? This does. What do you think? That's what it does, that side of the knob, it squeezes it into a kind of a saw shape, a kind of needle. And on the other side, what do you reckon? What, what, what are you going for? Let's go for, yeah, it was going to be a square, squarish, <laughs> kind of inverted pulse by the looks of it, kind of opposite of that, right? And if we sign, if we sign the shape, you can see what it's doing. It's curving the edges and it really wants to, really wants to turn into a sine wave. But we aren't going to let it. What happens if we modify the shape? The sign alterations are maintained and yet the shape still adjusts the Kind of looks like some kind of strange polarity squeezing, isn't it? It's, you know, I'll have to ask David technically what it's doing. But uh, there you go, the sign, sign stuff kind of adds interesting other colour to it as well. There you go. Now, this knob down here, this is fun as well. This switch, excuse me, um, is used to change the way the wave behaves. So let's stick it up. If you remember how it affected us as a modulation source, it kind of bookends the uh, sustain stage with multiples of uh, multiples of the mirrored stages of the rise and the fall 
phases of the ramp generator. What a lot of strange words. Um, but what this little bit down here does is it doubles up. So doubles up the uh, the way that the waveforms are read. So look, we can see because the rise. So I can show you what's happening here, right? So the full phase is 0.29 milliseconds, and the rise phase is whatever a millisecond. What's happening is the rise phase is being is 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 happening, and then it is being repeated in reverse. Uh, so that's what this bit is. So it's the first phase, second phase, and then the third phase is the um, in the increase of the fall. So it's the kind of reverse of the fall phase, and then the actual fall phase from the fall value. So there's a kind of mirrored stage in between these two peaks. I hope that made sense. Um, it makes more sense if I do this, and we kind of quad up the um, mirroring and duplication of those waveforms. It might be easier to see if I squeeze them a little bit like this. That's nice. So you can kind of see that there's duplication, duplification and quadruplication of the uh, of the waveform there. Um, and I think we have the same with an ultra. So this is eight times, so that signal is being kind of looped eight times in itself. You can see the four peaks and troughs of that initial rise phase, and then the four peaks and troughs of the oh there we go, of the full phase. Okay, and then we have a couple of other phases, uh, a couple of other options at the end here that basically kind of saturate the envelope a little bit. The envelope, the generator, the ramps, saturate the ramps, and they're so they kind of uh, look a bit like the um, sh when we adjust with a shape function and bend the edges out, um, so we can. You can see the very subtle change there. Let's just make that. So there you go, that's the signal being changed by the saturation controls as well. Great selection of sound design here, this is... I love that. Uh, yep, yeah, that's me having just a little bit of fun. It's wobbly. Oh, there we go. That was the ramp generator as an oscillator. This is the ramp generator as a filter. Um, surprise, you weren't expecting this. It's not the kind of resonant filter you might have um, expected when you hear the words filter. Um, it is, well, it's, it's basically a slew mechanism which slows, it kind of interprets the signal as rises and falls and then re writes those rise and falls with the values that we describe in the internal generator basically so it's kind of slowing the signal down so what we've got here is this basic oscillator which is just chucking me out that without an envelope um going into the ramp generator here into the slew port and out of the bi-directional out because we are listening to it as a an, as an audio signal not as a modulation source I think I probably did the same with the ramp generator. As you can see, the bi-directional output is what I'm using um, to get a good audio signal that switches between the positive and the negative, you know, up and down, zero crossing all the time. That's what we want from a good audio signal. Otherwise, it will be described as having problems with things like DC offset and that kind of thing. So... What have we got here? I'm going to increase the rate, slow down the rate at which it rises, and you can see from the signal that a couple of different things are happening. It's getting quieter. And it's kind of changing the shape of it. I mean, as you might expect with a... Um, by um, filtering a triangle wave, you kind of can get a sign edge out of it. You can kind of curve the edges off a little bit. 
It's not really what's going on here though. Let's make it bigger. I mean, it is still filtering the signal. It is still filtering the signal, and we can do the same with the afterphase as well, with the full. So we kind of we need to change the let's get a different shape. That that's probably a better shape to show this with actually, because. Uh, because uh, the ups and downs are more fierce, whereas with the saw shape, we've got a harsh up and a slow down, and so it's kind of these knobs aren't really being uh, not being exploited as much as they could be. Uh, so if we slow the full phase down, if we slow everything down, the signal disappears because well, we're just telling the signal to slow it all down, basically. Um, and when there's not much happening, it the signal just disappears. Um, so we can... Let's put this back to some kind of nice, audible sound. <laughs> right. Now, we can still... All, 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 all these values still affect the... So this is basically like going... This is like the signal going into it and we're changing the signal rather than we're generating a signal and um, affecting that with these knobs. What's coming in is being affected by <laughs> these these knobs. So we can squareify that, if we like, even more so. Let's put it back to... And we can turn that into a square even though it was a saw shape, because we're changing the way that the ramp is kind of reading the signal and playing it back. And we can turn it into a series of tiny little spikes as well. And there's the sign changing the signal again. And let's just do this a few times because this makes me happy. Let's go down a couple of pictures. And again, you can very slightly hear the sonic changes when I'm changing the relationship between the rise and the falls in this mode, in the slew mode. So let's increase the rise time and just kind of, you know, it, it's a filter. It's just working in an unconventional way. And oh, there you go. Then we can just... You notice as well, we don't have any triggering of the signal. There's no reset um, or trigger import because we're just mucking around with the signal that the ramp generator is receiving. There's also another way of using this, which I haven't really covered because it's fairly basic, but you can use it as a portamento um, control uh, for switching between pitches and that kind of thing. So, so ramp, this is a slew. Uh, if, you, if you input your pitch voltage, your pitch signal into the slew generator, then um, using the rises and falls, you can, I mean, say, say you have pitches going up, you can ensure that the up pitches uh, hit bang on and are perfectly on time and everything going down is slurred and slips around and doesn't hit the notes in time because you've got the portamento increased for only um, decreasing signals. Uh, okay, I think that covers it. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from that and uh, have fun with your ramp generators. Thanks for watching.